There is a candle.
can we come close with a prayer together? Just about to begin. In one minute, we are beginning. We want to encourage those who are yet to find their space to sit. Please find your spaces. There is a place reserved for the family. I hope the ushers are taking care of that. Uh, please sit in your designated places. We want to request we clear the aisle as we begin the service now. Could we then begin? I request that we clear the aisle. Let's hold a bit for the procession, please. Let us all stand. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We ask of you, King of Kings, that as you remember Carol in this service, that you cause her memory that we each share differently to inspire us and to prepare us for eternity. We pray for Dr. Gidai and the girls that you will grant them sufficient grace to eulogize their mom and for Daktari, his wife, and to all of us as we join in the story of Carol Gedai, that you alone may be exalted in this story, for we ask in Jesus Christ our Lord. The grass with us and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows in them. Surely the people are grass. Blessed are those that mourn, for they will be comforted. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. 
The saying is sure. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on the throne, just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Tell the next generation that this is God, our God forever and ever. He himself will guide us to death. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows in them. Surely the people are grass. Blessed are those that mourn, for they will be comforted. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. The saying is sure, if you have died with him, we shall live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil. We bring our very sincere condolences to Dr. Bernard Gidai, to Jennifer, to Dr. Mogure, and Wairimu, together with your family, both nuclear, expanded, and extended, with the Lord of Comfort may comfort you. We warmly welcome you all joining us in this service as we remember and celebrate our beloved dear sister Caroline Wanjiru Gidai, whom the Lord has called to himself. Please let us celebrate Caro and indeed rejoice in what she meant to us, but also let us grieve, but grieve knowing that she's gone to a better place. So on behalf of all uh, the elders of Cathedral, we warmly welcome you. We have my colleagues here with whom we lead the service. So we have uh, the Assistant Provost, uh, Reverend Major Kanye, who will be leading the service primarily. We have uh, the Reverend Alfred Appella, who joins us here, part of our clerical team. We have Reverend Johnson Jeroge, uh, who also is here. We have Reverend British Meso, and we have our lay leader, uh, Elizabeth Nganga, escorted with a very able choir and a host of members of the cathedral and the friends 
uh, and colleagues of the Gidais. Amen? We sing our uh, opening hymn. again church my name is Lorraine this is charity and we are here to lead you in praise and worship as we celebrate the life of Mama Mogore allow me to read a verse that has been a theme verse courtesy of Mogore through this period Job 1 verse 21 naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I will depart the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. So you can follow on the screens. It shall be projected. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful. Where your streams of abundance flow, blessed be your name. You can clap with us. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out. Yeah. 
Let's read Psalm 23, um, verse 1 to 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. because you know he's been faithful. Oh. It's running out. 
let us in silence thank God in our hearts for the life of our sister, each one of us remembering how Carol and what she meant to them. Receive our thanks, O Lord, and grant that we shall treasure the memories of our sister Carol, even with sadness, but with joy that we were blessed to know her and to share in her life. Grant that, Lord, we who are still alive shall constantly be reminded that life is frequently short. Help us, therefore, to daily walk in your footsteps, making the best use of our worried talents and living each day as though it were our last. Give us abundant grace to cope with difficult episodes in our lives and soberness as we enjoy the lighter moments. And as we sit here to celebrate the life of our sister, may your peace reign in our hearts supremely and may you reign through this service. Brothers and sisters, we have come together to celebrate the life of our sister Caro, whom the Lord has called home to be with himself. Yet we believe that since Jesus died and rose again, so it will be for those who die in Christ. For God will bring them to life with Jesus. Kindly take your seats as we continue with prayers. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. We pray that you may strengthen this faith and this hope in us, particularly those of us who are gathered here in all our days, that we may live as those who believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, and the resurrection of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will remain still and seated as we hear the litany, and after that, it will be followed by a psalm which you will do while standing. For everything, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. Today. A time to plant and, and a, time a time to, to pluck. pluck. A time to weep and a time, and a time to, to laugh. laugh. A time to mourn and a, and a time, time to, dance. to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time, and a time, to, time gather to gather them. them. A time to embrace and a, and a time, time to refrain, refrain from, from embracing. embracing. A time to seek and a time, and a time to, to lose. lose. A time to keep and, and a, time a time to cast, cast away. A time to rent and, and a, time a time to, to sue. A time to keep silent and a time, and a time, time to speak. To speak. May we stand as we read Psalm 39. I said, I will watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle on my mouth as long as the wicked are in my presence. But when I was silent and still, not even saying anything good, my anguish increased. My heart grew hot within me, and I meditated. Fire burned, then I spoke with my tongue. Show me, O Lord, my life's end, and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting is my life. You have made my days a mere hard breath. The span of my ears is as nothing before you. Each man's life is but a breath. Man is a mere phantom as he goes to and fro. He bustles about, but only in vain. He heaps up wealth, not knowing who will get it. But now, Lord, what do I look for? 
My hope is in you. Save me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of fools. I was silent. I would not open my mouth. For you are the one who has done this. Remove your scourge from me. I am overcome by the blow of your hand. You rebuke and discipline men in their sin. You consume their wealth like a moth. Each man is but a breath. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry of help. Be not deaf to my weeping, for I dwell with you as an alien, a stranger as all my fathers were. Look away from me that I may rejoice again before I depart and am no more. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. You can take your seats, please. We realize that Carol had so many, 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 many friends that she impacted personally, and I want to believe that a huge majority of us gathered here have a testimony and would give a testimony and a tribute to Carol, personal tribute of how Carol's life impacted you. Towards that end, we have so many tributes, some of them written, some of them online, and we would have liked to give everybody an opportunity to see something, to say something. But because of the sheer numbers and the limited time, we have compressed and we have tried to shorten the list just to make sure that every group is represented. And therefore, when we come to the time for tributes, apart from the family, the rest of us who will be privileged to have an opportunity to come here Kindly make your tribute as short as possible, and you are called to represent others, so please don't invite others. So when you are invited, just accept to represent the others. You can request them to stand, but kindly don't, don't tag other people into your air time, because uh, it is you who was appointed to speak on their behalf. At this time, we are going to invite Wanja Wabugu, to come and share with us the eulogy. And after that, we will invite the family. We cannot restrict the family to mourn their loved one, and therefore we will give them enough space for them to do that. The rest of us will share the remaining time. Uh, Wanja Wabogo, kindly come over and share the eulogy. God is good, and all the time, my name is Wanja Wabogo, a friend of Carlos, and I've been, I'm going to read the family tribute about our good friend, our mother, our friend, our comforter, our educator, our discipline master, all that. The life and times of Caroline Gedai, exceptional and dependable, caring, charismatic, loving and compassionate, charitable and empathetic. Many words can be said about our beloved Caroline, who for 62 years and 11 months touched the lives of many and left an indelible mark in their hearts, a phenomenal woman with many attributes to her name. Carol is a serious woman of grace who lived her faith to the fullest. A loving sister, her siblings fondly call, uh, recall her as an obedient, independent child was also an incredible athlete. Born on 17th November 1960, Wajiro was the sixth child of the late John Mutegi and late Jane Mugore. She grew up in Jogu ya, ya Wajiko, Kiamariga County, Kiamariga, Kiamariga Nyeri County, alongside her siblings, Wamuyo, Mudoni, the late Duncan Mweje, the late Dokas Nyabra, James Mukona, Millicent Wagui, and Catherine Wamboy. Scholar, sportsman, and leader. In 1968, she started her education in Luare Primary in Nyeri, moved to Nyahururu Primary School where she lived under the care of her elder sister, Mary. 
Following, following her exemplary performance in her, in her CPE then, she was admitted to Kenya High School. She quickly bladed in, in very well and made many long-term long friendships here and were graced by her authentic and very straightforward nature. Carlo mastered work life. Work life harmony early by maintaining academic and athletic prowess was an, was an active member of the debate club and World Drive Club. An astute sportswoman, which many of us did not know, Carol won many medals for her house and school at cross country and hockey tournaments. It was no surprise she, when she was elected the Huxley House, now Tausi sports prefect and later school games captain. Carol joined more in Nairobi girls <clears throat> in, in 1978 for her A-levels, but she still maintained her relationship with her previous uh, girlfriends in Kenya High. Uh, a natural reader, Carol served as a secretary of the geographical club and was also a house and school, pre school prefect. Then we go to Akiri Karo. Karo joined the University of Nairobi in 1980 to study at the Faculty of Law. At the university, she reunited with her secondary, secondary schoolmates and made new friends quickly, forming a strong network that she held dear for over 40 years. Um, uh, I mean, uh, um, a feat that she never failed to recognize acknowledging where she came from. Carol graduated in 1984 and proceeded for pupillage at Asha and Wilcock, where she trained at uh, the late Rex Samson, Jan Mohamed is somewhere here, and I think Gadobi, um, uh, Justice P.J. Lansley, Pama Wari, amongst others. After her admission to the bar in 1985, she worked for retired Justice GBM Karaoke at GBM Karaoke and Co., and concluded salaried employment at the law firm of the late Jack Barassa. In 1991, she partnered with her longtime friend, Luce Kambuni, to found Kambuni and Gedai Advocates, one of the few all-women partnerships at the time. They are the ones who encouraged us to get out of uh, where we were working before, and we started on our own. Together, they grew an admirable practice in insurance, conveyancing, and commercial law. Carla was an astute legal mind, ever thorough and legalist in her work. In 2006, Carlo established C.W. Gedai and Company Advocates, where she was joined by her nephew, Mainangesho. Carlo served her professional society with distinction. She was an accountable and valued member of the Mini Money Bar Bench and Court Users Committee. She would log on to the Code Virtual Platform at Landom to collectively evaluate fun functionality and would raise issues of concern at committee meetings. Carlo also served as the Law Society Practice Standards and Ethics Committee a contribution is lauded. This is a fact that every lawyer present today will affirm that Carla was a nasty practitioner and never allow monkey business in the practice of law. She has mentored many young, younger advocates, nurturing, nurturing, them, nurturing in them good work ethic and moral standing. Their presence here is, an, is, a, is, an, an, is a testament to that fact. Cheerful giver, a charitable spirit saw her use her time after completion of A-levels to open up educational opportunities for her community. From a noble idea born inside her father's Kalehe Hotel in Karatina, Carlo was instrumental in establishing Kiamaliga Secondary School, which is now Kiamaliga Boys, alongside Mwagimiano. On an individual scale, she has also continuously supported the educational pursuits of many in need, proudly celebrated their accomplishments and encouraged them to carry it forward. Caro is remembered by many for the cup of tea she would buy when she bumped into you during hospital visiting hours or at lunch, <clears throat> or at the lunch she would share in the office or the treats she would offer at the Java, Java across her office and many acts of generosity in moments of crisis uh, and celebration. Faithful disciple, Caro was a committed Christian and dedicated her life to serve the Lord. She was baptized at Luare PCA Church in Kiamariga and confirmed in the SEK Church in her teenage years. She has been an active member of All Saints Cathedral where she worshiped at 9.30 a.m. service. In 1994, she also joined the Bible Study Fellowship class at All Saints and diligently attended the women's class for seven years. When, when a BSF class was started at the neighboring AIC Minimani Church, Carlo, in her usual self, was appointed a, clear leader, a class leader, which he happily did every Monday evening for seven years. Carlo actively supported the growth of the church, 
by contributing financially and in kind to all the Saints, uh, to all Saints Cathedral Multipurpose Hall project and more recently, the Children and Teens Center, CTC. And I assure you, uh, my aunts, uh, grandchildren proudly don the, their cups and T-shirts for painting as Mayan calls them, the tale of their grandmother's dedication to a billion children for Christ. In the past decade, Carlos Seoblisly served as a legal representative to the All Saints Cathedral Parish Church Council for six years. On 16th April 2023, she received an amazing award in recognition of, of her service from 2013 to 2019 from this church, Mutmia Gada, in 1978, Carlo met Bernard, the son of her parents' longtime friends, the late Peter Munenemari and Jean Yagishira. Their friendship blossomed over the years, and in 1984, they got married and soon after welcomed their eldest child, Jennifer Hyoko, and Mugure. Ben and Carlo spent the rest of the 80s building their young family and early careers. With her husband now a medical doctor working in Nyeri and then Masabit, Carlo effectively juggled the demands of her early life career and raising her young daughters. In the mid-90s, they welcomed their retirement baby, Wairimu. As a mother, Carlo was ever-present, ever present, caring, loving, and compassionate. Her family was her greatest joy, and she was ever devoted to their care. She carefully planned her day to ensure that she was available to drop and pick her children from school and she never carried her work home so that she could be present for her family. She was elated to be called Shosho when Naishoru and Mayan were born. She has consistently dotted on them and was the first to wish them monthly birthday blessings. She cultivated a deep bond with them individually, even when toddler excitement allowed her to see their nostrils on FaceTime. Intentional. There is a theory that a person can be connected to any other person through no more than five intermediaries. With a wide social network, Carlo was often the first and only intermediary for many people. Whether you were in the middle of Lake Nakuru National Park, or a connecting flight, or at a wedding in Uganda, Carlo probably introduced you to someone she knows. Each time her family went on holiday, the family would estimate how many of her friends she would meet on that trip and she always exceeded the number that had been set. She made friends literally everywhere she went, the salon, shopping, shopping center, a children's school event. Carlo cared deeply for her friends and had a special way of connecting with them and their families. She was very committed to her alumni groups at Kenya High and was in the organizing committee for the class reunion held on 22nd August 2023. Shuja. In May 2013, Carla was diagnosed with breast cancer and treated accordingly. She has been a variant survivor for the last 10 years, attending to her personal and career laws almost seamlessly. Self-pity has never been in her vocabulary. Not once did she question her struggles, but instead encouraged many in the Nairobi Hospital Cancer Center, as well as friends and family that were newly diagnosed with cancer. On Friday 13th October 2023, she was taken ill and admitted at Nairobi Hospital. She received amazing care from a team of dedicated specialists and nurses, both in the ward and ICU. Our good Lord Jesus saw it fit to call her home on Sunday, 22nd October 2023 at 10.45 a.m. Carol has fought the good fight. She has finished the list and she has kept the faith. We have no doubt that she was, she was warmly received in heaven and told, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. That, dear friends, summarizes the, the life of our good friend who has invited us here today. And uh, as I sit down, I have tried to analyze and understand Carlo's life, and I've realized Carlo was not only a keeper of the good word, but a doer of the good word. In the Catholic faith, we have a saint called uh, Saint Mother Teresa, 
this is my Saint Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa, before she departed, her words are, my work on earth is done, I will go to do where I will be doing more in heaven. But then she also quipped, I will, when I go to heaven, I will be escaping and coming to earth so that I complete my works. May I pray that each and every one of us here carry something from Carlos' life so that we can be able to make the world a better place to live in. Fare with you, fare thee well, Carlos. Thank you, Wanja. I can only imagine the struggles that you had to try to summarize the eulogy of our sister Caro. You'd have come up with volumes and volumes of books talking about the life of our sister Caro. A very rich eulogy that speaks about Caro, but also speaks into our lives as individuals. Uh, this time we are going to bring on the family. I don't know whether you'd like to come, all of you here, uh, starting with Dr. Gidai, so that we can share our tri your tributes. Yeah, it would be good that you come, all of you. It will be Dr. Gidai, followed by Jennifer, followed by Mugure, followed by Wairimo. Then we'll have a nephew, John Minor, and a sister, a sister, Mary Saint. Karibu, Dr. Gidai. Good morning. The provost of All Saints Cathedral, the assistant provost, and all the clergy. Thanks for this service. To all our friends who came today to say farewell to Caro, thanks for joining us. I really wanted to, to talk and give this speech, but my voice today is a bit hoarse, so I will ask my friend, Dr. Goge, to read my tribute for me. And also, just before we proceed further, Caro was a meticulous lady. Let me apologize on behalf of the family that the programs are ready, eh? but they are somewhere along the way. If they come, we will give them Maria. So, Dr. Goge, why don't you join me? I'll read the tribute uh, by Dr. Bernard Gidai to my dear, dear loving wife, Caroline Wajiro. I still remember when we first met in 1978, when you had come to visit my sister, Wanjogo, who was your junior at Kenya High School. We looked at each other's eyes, and we have been in each other's thoughts since that day. As students in the University of Nairobi, our love bloomed and blossomed. Our walks between Hall 4 and Box became a daily affair. I was always amazed how unperturbed you were by the mosquitoes during our evening walks. When the university closed for a year after the attempted coup in 1982 and we were sent back home, the mandatory weekly trips to the chief's camp were a joy for me. These weekly walks were also the time your mother and the whole village noticed that I've gotten the most beautiful girl in the village. I will always cherish those walks as it's during those slow walks that we decided that we are partners for life. As God blessed us with children and you became a caring and loving mother, you have brought them up to be disciplined and independent and courageous. Your class and elegance were seen as you testify decorated our home and kept our lives meticulously planned. You had a plan for every day of the week, effortless juggling it all. Carl, your smile and laughter created warmth in our home. It didn't matter which you were in as long as you were home. The whole house felt warm. Caro, you pushed me to achieve my goals and supported me in my career. You held fort at our home and allowed me to thrive, while simultaneously growing our careers. Our travels were memorable, 
I still remember how you would shop for our children, friends, and relatives. My dear Wajiro, I remember when I left the country for one year, and I left you as the contractor of our house. You bought cement, supervised the construction team, and we'll talk weekly as you give me the progress of our house. I returned to find the construction on track. You are truly the most efficient contractors. You've been the most trusted advisor of all sorts of matters. I will miss your counsel, wise counsel. I know I was an impatient driving instructor, but eventually became a better driver than me. When our children were learning to drive, they immediately turned to you, our expert at reverse parking for guidance. You always cared more for others, even when you needed to focus more on yourself. I'll never forget how you took care of my parents as they aged, ensuring that our home was well equipped to support their care. You never skipped your daily prayer and devotion sessions, or your exercise sessions where you would skip with a rope as you prayed your favorite gospel music. Carl, time has really flown. I can't believe you are gone, and, you, and as your body rests here, I'm sure your soul is resting with the Lord. The last few months have been tough for you, Carl, Yet you remained more positive about your illness than I was. While it breaks my heart that you're gone, I'm happy you did not suffer for long, my life. My life will never be the same. But I'm happy that you are with the Lord. As we took our marriage vows, we still, we say, till death do us apart. The time has come, go and be with the Lord. Your loving husband, Bernard Gidai. Um, good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Hyoko Gidai. The title of my tribute is Nina Hyoko. And the aim is to get through this with as little tears as possible. But if I do cry, please understand. My two mommy, Mrs. G. Carroll. I had the honor and pleasure to be your first child, the one with whom you learned motherhood, and looking at Moa and myself, I can see the exemplary job that you have done over the years. The beauty of being your first is that I saw you through all the stages of mothering, from rushing to hospital for a constipated child and being taught how to insert enemas. When people say my mother was a doctor on the side, she really, really was, and she started from a very young age. Um, balancing a toddler, they say I was clingy, but there's no proof. No one has any proof whatsoever, so it's not true. And a newborn with more, and I don't think it helped that I was the worst feeder ever. Moving on to figuring out which school I'd start my education in and walking the journey with me through it all, and eventually watching you, Mother Wa. And to crown it all, watching you become a shosho and throw all inhibition to the wind. And I sure and Mayan were your joy in every way. And I show's passport picture quickly replaced the picture of us in your wallet the moment you got it. You made it your goal to teach me how to cook, the most basic and the fanciest things ever. People talk of Kikuyu moms and soup, but mom was out here baking us cakes and muffins for school break and making scotch eggs from scratch for a snack. It's probably because she went to the Kenya High School where they ate everything with forks. I cannot remember a birthday when mom did not get me a cake, and even when we were older, one of us was delegated to ensuring that the birthday person had a cake. Even as recently as this year when she went in for surgery on my birthday, mom ensured that I had cake. I fondly remember one time when you were away for a retreat and you asked me to ensure that the food for most visiting day was done. That was the Sunday I learned that I am your daughter and I am capable of handling a lot. You were my shield for so many different things, Mom. You insisted on me getting braces at a young age so that my teeth could be straight. And to encourage me, you always bought me ice cream after tightening. Years later, when cancer came knocking at my door, 
and it wouldn't have been discovered if it wasn't for your insistence, Mom. You shielded me from any negative talk by ensuring that those who came to visit me in the hospital had positive energy. You are a giant in your craft, but a silent giant. And in the last few days, I have learned the extent of your force in the legal society. You never did things for applause, but you did because you knew your purpose and you lived it out wholly. I am yet to meet a person who has a negative thing to say about your mom. You treated everyone with kindness and made it your mission to participate, not only in my life, but all my friends' lives. I remember Ju during Juliet's wedding, he arrived and found no cake and promptly sent me a message asking if he should dash to Chumi and get one. You are a guest, but wanted to ensure Juliet's day is beautiful and you had done everything to make it so. Watching you fight cancer in 2013 was painful. I would take you for chemo sessions and you held onto your hair for so long. And the day I had to cut it off, you held my hand when I should have been holding yours. Through it all, you continue to be present for us with energy and zeal that could only be for God, from God. I will miss our random conversations about the strangest of things. I will miss the calls for sales that you had spotted and places that you had seen where my medicine was cheaper. Um, I will miss your reminders for birthdays, insurance payments, Octamed goats, and big church services where you needed us to show up and support you. About a month ago, we were talking about how in the Bible people would sleep in the midst of problems and then wake up and things would be fine. Elijah in the desert, Daniel in the lion's den, Jesus in the midst of the storm, to name but a few. When you were taken to ICU, I knew it would be for, for you to recover. I talked with you and you squeezed my hand and I knew you would be fine. I collectively asked people to pray for you. And just like the greats in the Bible, you slept and woke up in glory where everything is just fine. You are restored. And now I know I have an angel watching over me, my, who is my mom. As much as it, this particular moment feels surreal, I feel as though you were seated with Jesus asking him to send us extra peace. You were me and I was you, mom. And I am glad you were my mom. And I will forever be Carol's daughter. Rest, mommy. I love you always. Thank you. The one who's vertically challenged. My name is Mugure. I look on my mom's copyright. The irony of life is I began to speak in public a long time ago, but this week it has been a struggle, but I will try. Mom, Karo Ben, Shekameta, not once did I think I would have to pen a tribute to you so soon, but I'm glad that I have many warm memories to share. I believe my love for good food was born in your kitchen. The numerous birthday cakes that you baked for us, for us from scratch, with my only contribution being picking the color combinations for the icing and gladly licking off the cake butter from the dishes, the muiko, the bowls, the mixing um, thingy. You also introduced me to meals like shepherd's pie and upside down pineapple cake that made me appear like a gourmet chef when I eventually got her home. I shall credit as well my shopaholic nature to you. Mom and I would shop. We could shop anywhere for furniture, for clothes, for shoes, for accessories. I remember one time when I think I was in third year and she called and asked, are you free? I said, yeah. Kyoko was also free, so she said, let's go check out this sale on Gong Road um, near Coptic. And when we entered that, it must have been an old house converted into a shop. It was full of shoes, like shoe heaven. Mom and I were in bliss and Kyoko was complaining how she can't find a shoe that she likes. So we bought and we bought and we bought and I'm like, how will we pay? And she's like, don't worry, we've got a card. <laughs> so I don't know if it was dad's card or whose, but <laughs> we should. I can't say how many times I wore those shoes, but you know, the experience of shopping. When we went to South Africa, uh, 
that was for my friend Arabo's wedding. We got lost in the Santon Mall, but we were happily lost because we were again shopping. When I moved to Australia, I remember telling her about this mall, um, Karinyap, which is huge. It is so big, and I was like, you need to come and see, <laughs> and we shop some more. You would love it here, Mom. I'm sad that you wouldn't come. I saw your pride when I joined Kenya High, Obama, and I still think you had a role to play with me getting into Tausi. She was also then, in, uh, it was called Huxley, and I was in Tausi. Mom dropped me off on my first day of high school with Wairimo, who was then, was it three or four years? And Wairimo began to cry, and I was upset because Mom had to leave. And I was dropped in 15 minutes, and everybody else's mom stayed around <laughs> or dad. Dad that time was in um, the States for his fellowship. But then she made up for it because every visiting day without fail, my mother would cook up a storm and assign Kyoko and dad the things that they were going to cook. There'd be nyamachoma, there'd be everything that you think about. And then one day she surprised me and came with this red foldable picnic table. You know, we were used to just put in a shuka on the floor, but she came with it and just to teach me and I'll never forget that. But beyond the visiting days, she also shows my mom. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, the school doctor, Dr. Njuki, used to come to review students who are unwell. And Njoki, her daughter, was my classmate. Mom and Dr. Njuki used to alternate who would bring us um, a meal from the sanatorium, which was what they had prepared, maybe um, some chicken or pizza or something. So we always had a meal from the sanatorium. One fine day when we were coming from the sanatorium, uh, Njoki and I bumped into our principal then, Mrs. Saina, and we had a big Uchumi paper bag of shopping from mom. And she asked us, where did you get that? And <laughs> we said the sanatorium, because <laughs> we didn't want our folks in trouble. But that was mom. Like, she would always make sure we are we're taken care of. In campus, um, her colleagues at Jubilee Exchange would feed us. You know, walk into town, the Brook campus person, and come and eat steers and stuff. Not just junk food, but also healthy food. Mom always had a fruit. Mom, you are generous to a fault. It's not that you had a lot, but that, that you had, you freely gave. I've seen how you have shared what you have with my friends, with people who come into your office, with colleagues. If you had packed lunch in a team, that was what you shared with everyone. I also had the privilege of serving as her Mpesa agent for quite some time before, before I remote took over, and I could tell you how generously she gave. Anytime someone was in need, she would send something. Mom, I've also seen you glow as a grandma. When Naishara was born, it was somewhere in the middle of her second phase of treatment, but she came to the hospital, and she also came to take us home from the hospital. I remember her telling you, <laughs> drive slowly, <laughs> because she was holding her, her granddaughter. But beyond that, she, in her state, would do tummy time on the carpet with Naishora. She would swing Mayan on her legs, Sunday afternoons, when we visited, she would be cuddled with them on the couch, reading newspapers, singing a song. She had her own sing-along songs for them. When she traveled, she made sure she bought them classy outfits. But even from here, she would find something and just buy and buy and dress them really well. Mom, the funny thing is, once upon a time, you used to say that a phone should only be for calling and texting, but in the last, is it six or seven years, you become the queen of tech, knowing how to FaceTime and share videos. Such a move from your Nokia phone. I will miss our calls as we drive home from school. Every time on Sunday when we come from church, Naishora points out an Anglican church and says, that's Shushu's church, which she'll come to when she comes to Australia. You're undoubtedly the greatest mom ever. You have been my biggest cheerleader. 
How many calls did you make to keep me company as I drove from to work in Nyerio Kangundo? She would be leaving Karen and I would be driving to Madari and we are talking, Madari in Nyeri. <laughs> I call her Shekameta because she would be like, and I'm like, I'm already speeding on <laughs> Pika Superhighway, but she, you know, she, that's how she was. She was, she would think that the time from Karen to town is the same as from Parklands, or was, where was it? Parklands to Madari. How many mornings did you wake me up, mom, to ensure that I made it for the 6.30 a.m. surgery rounds after a busy call? How many words of encouragement did you share when I was ready to throw in the towel? My success is your success because you have fought in that arena with me. And you have been a constant reminder that God put me here to achieve his purposes and not a purpose. I'm honored to have called you my friend. I miss our daily many phone calls and I miss waking up to your text messages. I don't want to remember you by your illness, but for how you handled it. You helped me navigate the newness of motherhood, yet you were on treatment. Your strength to praise God while navigating the rough parts of your treatment journey remains admirable. A woman of unwavering faith you are, and it hurts me deeply that you are gone and how fast you left us. This last week has felt like the way Job received that news. Every time I got a message, I thought it was just an added vision for a transfusion. But every message that came felt like the way Job was told, this and this happened and your people are no more. And when I landed here on Thursday and I sat and listened to those doctors, I wondered who they were talking about. But I told you, as I told you on that Sunday, as I bid you farewell, I have gone through and I'm going through those five cycles of grief in tandem, and they seem not to be following the order that was said. But I can genuinely say, Mom, that in all this, I will say like Job, I will not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. You are the gift he graciously gave us, and I will praise him for that. And I want you, mom, to rest assured that the faith you had is also in us, even now in this trying time. This week we've been privileged to hear so many encouraging messages from you people of how mom not only knew you, but she would have follow up like in details. And I will just share a song I shared with her because we share the same faith and it is the only thing that makes sense right now. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaken, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So I would he feel now? He won't. I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength Cause I built my life on Jesus He's never let me down He's faithful through every season So I would he feel now He won't Rain came wind blew my house was built on you i'm safe with you i'm gonna make it through cause i'm standing strong on you 
my faith is built on you. Mom, I love you, now and always. I'm good afternoon, everyone. I'm Wairimo, but there are some people who know me as Jean. I just want to start by assuring all the ophthalmologists in here, my glasses are fine. I, I'm just not very comfortable with crowds, so this is how I'll get through this, because right now I can hardly see anyone, but yeah, that's how I'll get through this. <clears throat> Mine will be a bit different. I'm usually not a person of many words. Okay, depends on the situation. Sometimes I have words. Today is one of those days where I really tried to find the right words to sum up my mom, but I, I feel like even whatever I've written will really never be enough to express what I truly feel, but here is what I have to say. The one Bible verse that really has, to me in this period, been um, representing what mom is, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things, and I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Truly, truly, mom has been our most gracious, most caring, most loving, and as everybody has said, she truly has been a good and faithful servant. Over the past few days, we've had so many beautiful tributes about you, mom. We've heard about how you've consistently shown up and been present for people, and how you've made every single person here feel extra special. Now, listening to all of this, it sounds like your day had like an extra 72 hours that the rest of us don't have. And I've really been wondering, are we talking about the same person? Because mom was, I mean, she lived her life in the normal eight to five. She woke up at the normal time, went to sleep at the normal time, and yet somehow managed to do all of the things that she did and gave everyone that undivided attention. That I think is something I'll forever like try to understand how that happened. Because for me, really, it felt like, you know, when it came to me, like I was the most important person to her because it never felt like she never had time for me. She always had time for me. I felt like from the moment she woke up, you know, she'd come and tell me what we are doing for the day. Throughout the day, she would check up on me. Have you eaten? Have you done this? Please go do this. Please do that. When she came home, I also always felt like, yeah, the first thing is, hi, have you done this? Have you done that? So to me, I'm still trying to wrap my hand around how she was doing all this. Um, yeah, and I'll probably be doing that for a very long time. Now, when I was younger, I was often referred to by some people as her handbag, because everywhere she was, especially over the weekends, I was probably right there with her. For me, I really looked forward to weekends because I never knew what adventure we would be up to that day. It would be something as simple as just going to Karen to the shops and coming back home, but there was always something to look forward to. I always entered the car not knowing where we are going because, like, truly, are we really going to the shop? Or are we going to Mama Judy's? Or are we going to Mama Wango's? Where is it that we're going? I was always so excited. And I had the best childhood thanks to her. Um, I went to many places with her, to her friends' houses. I loved going with her to her hairdressers. I've seen her hairdresser here today. I'm so grateful you're here. I loved going to her to her hairdressers because now they'd let me um, undo the rollers and I used to feel so important. And yeah, you know, I'm a big girl. Now, as a teenager, of course, as many teenagers are, you know, you don't want to hang around your parents so much. So even though I was like, I don't want to go anywhere anymore. Yet she always just found a way to convince me to be her handbag. Wherever she went, I would still go. And then I became a young adult and I went to university and I'll be less and less of a handbag, but I still cherish those moments. When I was at Alliance, I would come with her to town in the morning so that I could teach her ride. I'd go sit in the office. Sometimes she'd give me some small, small tasks here and there to do. That's when I really got to understand her work. Her work was very difficult, and I really don't know how she, again, I'm still trying to figure out how she would do that very difficult work and still have time for everybody and still be in bed by 9 o'clock. Me, that one, I'm, I can't figure that part out. But I enjoyed coming to her office in the morning. Um, then in university, I was in Strathmore, and on Fridays, when I was in the hostel, she'd come and pick me. 
we go to Galeria, do our things, we go home. She has picked and dropped me from many places over the years. Um, even as recently as this year when you would think, you know, you're past the age of being picked and dropped by your parents, but especially after hikes, she was always available to come and pick me as I am very dusty and limping and she comes and the first question she asks is, is why do you see what happens when you don't exercise before a hike? Then we go home. She actually gave me a hiking book when I told her I've started hiking. I didn't even know you can have hiking books, but she found me a book and she told me to read the book. I've not yet read it, I'll, I'll read it, but <laughs> I'll read it, yeah. So as I said, I've really tried to sum this all up, but I really can't, but I'm just going to share some of my greatest highlights with her. One was the great handwriting battle of 2004. Now when I was in law primary, my handwriting was not the best. I attribute that partly to myself because I, was, I actually wasn't doing the handwriting homework. I had better things to do with my time, so I wasn't doing it. So my handwriting was not good at all, and it would reflect in the reports, and it was sort of a complaint in school. And mom got fed up with that, and one day she came to school, and she told the teachers, this is the last time we are going to have this in the report. So she came home with a simple plan. She told me this many years later, that each week, okay, sorry, she explained the logic many years later. So each week I had to write a composition on something, something I had watched, a book I had read, something I had to write a composition, a composition each week. And what that was doing, she was now giving me that confidence, you know, to build up the handwriting. So by the time I was going to upper primary, things were lovely and yeah, never had any more comments about it. But then this writing of the compositions is actually now what started off my, should I say, that's now when I started creative writing because I had, like she's the one who really built that up in me and I carried it with me throughout um, my schooling life and it's something that I really enjoyed and excelled in. So I'm really grateful that she did that for me. The other one is the great alarm clock saga of 2013 which some people here know about. I am, um, should I say, the long-standing chairperson at home of the committee of people who like to sleep. That's me, I'm the chairperson. Now, this time I was, we were left overnight, me and the members of this group, who I will not mention. And the members of this group entrusted me to set the alarm for early Monday morning. The alarm was to go off at 5.30 a.m. I think you can tell where this story goes. I set it for 5.30 p.m. So come Monday morning, and had rained that night. Now, me and the other members of this group were to be in Upper Hill. I was to be in school by seven, and the other members were to be in meetings at the same time. Monday morning, 6.45, mom calls to find out where we are. Where are we? To my Kanyaga Mablanketi. Uh, her side of the story is that the phone dropped because she just had me being called very loudly. That was the first and only time I was late for school. We didn't even know what to do when we got to school. We were confused. We, we didn't know what to do because I've never been that late to school. And that was the last day she entrusted me to set my alarm for important events. And any time I had to be up very early, she's the one who would insist we have a double layer of alarm clocks, and that really came through in many, many ways. Another important thing I learned from her is how to see my work as a form of service, as a form of worship, and listening to what everybody has said about how she viewed her work and how much time she gave to the church. She was truly my first teacher on how to be a good um, employee, and I'll always value her for that. Now, as I wind up, let me just run through, because again, I couldn't put this all in words, what I'll really miss about her. I'll miss being her personal assistant in the car when she was driving. She would tell me, do this, do that on my phone. While I'm not much of a shopper, as, as Mugure, I really loved going shopping with her on Sundays while dad was in the ward rounds. So he would be there in the ward rounds, wherever he was, and then he'd come and he'd find shopping has been done and he needs to you know, do something about it so we would get our nice things. I'll miss being her most recent MPESA agent and her technical support. I don't know why she would be in the office calling me to sort out her Zoom. I am at home. I am supposed to figure out what is wrong with her Zoom from the house. 
I ask her, mom, please, my knee is there. No, 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 wait a minute, I need you to fix this for me. I don't even know what the problem is, but she trusted that I could do her Zoom from the house. How she took care of her pets. Oh, I think if there's very spoiled pets in Nairobi, it is hers. From chicken to the cat to the dog. Do you know, imagine you are just there living your life, minding your business, and then you get a message, please go and buy my chicken maize from a very specific shop. The chicken have their own food, but no, her chicken have their special meals. I hear that um, they used to be sent to buy now the cat's food, and they have gotten to Karen. They need to, I mean, they are there in the bus in Karen, and they are told alight and buy for the cat its food. I miss our slow Saturday mornings uh, when we're just in the house relaxing. I'll miss you coming to my room for chocolate and complaining when there's none. I will miss how you supported me in everything that I did, from the hiking to whatever I wanted to do. I'll miss um, those conversations after we've had supper, when we're just sitting there watching that random soap opera that we don't know what it is about, but you would watch it, and we have to watch it with you. I really don't know how we are going to watch that TV again. <sighs> Thank you for teaching me how to drive. Thank you for being patient with me. There are so many more things I can say, and I will keep saying them from as long as you know we are here. But for now, all I will say is go well. I will really, really miss you. you I, I, I don't have the words to express how much I will miss her. But thank you, ma'am, for mothering me. Every single day of my life, I have felt mothered. I have been loved and cared for more than I can ever express. Thank you. So thanks a lot, Shash, for bearing with us. And now we'll go to the rest of the tributes. I won't talk more. We have Millicent and Minor. Kindly keep it short. Good afternoon, church. God is good, and all the time, indeed he is. My name is Maina Ngesho, and this is my tribute to Mrs. Gidai. I can't believe you have left us. Mrs. Gidai and I have practiced law jointly since 2006. She was my aunt, boss, mentor, friend, confidant, and wore so many other hats. I'm extremely heavy-hearted knowing that we shall no longer have our usual morning heart-to-heart -heart before the morning rush began. By all accounts, we have truly lost a leader, a friend, a colleague, and to any person who really knows us, we know we have lost a special one. But the Lord called her to his side, and as always, she answered the call. Mrs. G was a brilliant lawyer from who I and many others have learned. She was also a giving and caring friend, as can be attested to by her peers, colleagues, and friends. Mrs. G adored her workmates, and when required, was always a firm hand when it was needed to steer us in the right direction. But most of all, Mrs. G loved her family with a passion that we can only seek to emulate. My mother and I always refer to Mrs. G as her firstborn, and she played the role to a T. There's not enough time nor words to describe Mrs. G and the role she played in my life specifically, sorry, in my life specifically, and to the legal profession generally. She shall be immensely missed, but her legacy lives on through us who knew her and loved her. Goodbye, Auntie Carol. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Wangoi Carol's immediate follower, and she's the last one. On behalf of our sisters and brother, I'll try and read, and she'll also assist. We thank God for giving us Carol to be our sister. Her deeds would fail several novels. 
She revalued family and was our legal, spiritual, medical advisor and always there for all of us during good and bad times. Even though she was the sixth born in our family, when she needed to give tough love, she did give. Where empathy was needed, she really gave. Carol was selfless and generous to a fault. She went out of her way to check on each one of us by phone. We are sure Safaricom is wondering what happened to this caller. She, this she extended to our kids and grandchildren. Each time a grandchild was born, for any of us, she bought a towel and clothes and made sure they reached the mom even when she could not physically make it. If you had a function, Carol would always come in and help you plan the best function you could imagine, which she exceeded even to our grandchild, Modoni. Carol really loved family. She took the extra mile of knowing our spouses and their exceeded family. I'd never want to see us divided. More as family, we should start together up to the end. In Carol's home, food and drinks were always in plenty. Our late sister Nyambura used to tell her, if there is a famine in Kenya, her household would be the first to die because they are used to, to plenty. Carol's home was always open to all of us, and she always made us feel at home. She extended her warmth and generosity to not only her immediate family, but to the community at large. She really valued education, education and was a mentor to not only our kids, but to others. She would constantly remind everyone we are from Madeira, Magidomo, when emphasizing on the value of education. Carol and Dr. Gedaya took care of our late parents at old age. For this, we will always be grateful for the love they showed our parents. As a family, we will cherish her good deeds and in our hearts and pray to God to keep us united. We are grateful for the years we spent together as siblings, and we surely miss her dances during family functions. Carol never wanted us to worry or feel like she's a burden to anyone. She would mask her plans with a smile, uh, sorry, her pains with a smile. She would even be from the hospital, but when you met, she was always full of life. We thank God that she did not suffer and is resting in the right heart of God. I was going had a real big sister in Carol from my young age up to the end. I will surely miss her daily calls and online chats. If we didn't chat or talk for a day, the next day she would ask me if I had no credit and I would know she had, uh, she had some. Our sister, say hi to dad, mom, Mweje and Nyabura, till we meet again, and may her soul rest in eternal peace. Amen. Are we going to have an anthem from the choir? So, choir.
Thank you, choir, for reminding us about uh, peace in the valley. And for sure, there will be peace in the valley. And thank you, family, for being strong. May the Lord continue to encourage you. Brothers and sisters, uh, time for tribute. We are remaining with two minutes for tribute. But the provost has accepted to donate 10 of his <laughs> minutes for preaching. So we have 12, and we have six different uh, groups that are supposed to share their tributes. So if every group can make advantage of their two minutes, you can be sure we will be in good time. And therefore, we are going to have a short tribute from, uh, we finished with the family, we are going to have friends, friends from Kenya High and University of Nairobi. They will be represented by Mothoni Kemani, colleagues at CW Gidai and Core Advocates. They will be represented by Hannah Njeru, Raw Society of Kenya representative will be their president, uh, Bwana Eric Theuri, and then we'll have the church representative. So Karibuni Sana in that order. So we have friends, followed by colleagues at CW, and then Law Society of Kenya. Okay, the group uh, should be here now so that they, <laughs> she is calling a group yes, to come and Kenya see. Yes, Kenya High School, class of 77 and 79, and the benevolent group, please come forward because we are singing the school hymn. And as you're coming, maybe with your permission, I could just say something about Carol, reflections on my friend Carol, who I first met on 7th February 1974 when she joined Kenya High School from Nyahururu. Carol, for those who have problems with where they went to school, was admitted as K003-087, and her admission number was 6568. So we can be sure she's a Bomerian and she was a good student. Carol was in Huxley House. I was in Nightingale, which is the next block and she was very athletic as you've had. She was part of the, she was, she was playing hockey and she used to do cross country. Some of us were lazy. We would hide from our PE teacher and I see my PE teacher is here and uh, she would make sure that she's re ever ready. We were all excited to come to the high cost school which was then largely led by Wazungu, our headmistress was a Muzungu, and we were very excited, some of us, having to eat a three-course meal. I know some of you do not know some of the foods that we ate, macaroni and cheese, pineapple upside down, toad in the hole. I'm sure some of you are wondering whether there was a toad, and many, many other nice things, apple pie, pineapple upside down, really were spoiled. We were feeling like queens coming from the village where we are just sitting there and at the most you can find chapati on Christmas. We were so excited and it, it was such a joy to be in that school where our laundries were washed every Saturday. We never washed clothes. We were the children of the, I don't know, we were privileged. Carol quickly made friends and she was very hard working. She, she made sure that she kept her friendship. Although she left us after Form 4, her heart remained in Boma, and she kept her friends. We reconnected with Carol again when we were in the University of Nairobi. And at the university, we were three of us, Rachel Mogo and me and Carol, who were permanently together. When we got our boom, because we had been spoiled, would go up to snow cream, eat ice cream, and do Kalikit. I'm sure the youngsters are wondering what is Kalikiting. And of course, go to Mrs. Manji's and buy the most expensive dress, which were imported, not like today, where China has made life very easy. So we had a good time, we had a good laugh, and we were there for each other. In the university, again, Carol was very hardworking and she really did well. She was always meticulous. More than some of us are a bit lazy, would be sleeping and Carol would make sure she did her homework. So in a nutshell, what was Carol to us? Carol, you came into our lives. You are a true friend. Carol cared for me, particularly one of the hardest moments as a young person is when we lost our brother in 1982 when he died of cancer. And cancer was unknown and suffering and seeing him waste away in Kenyatta Hospital, Carol holding my hand together in Murugi was very touching. Uh, in, in the university, many people did not understand Carol because she shot straight. 
people would probably think this girl is not is being rude, but she was just being honest. And we always had to tell people, Carol means no harm. She is as harmless as any any little fly. That was Carol for you. So she was a great friend. You came into our lives. You sold seeds of friendship. You conquered with selfless love. You mentored us. You always stood by when others would walk away. To your wonderful friendship, there is no end. Thank you for all the things you did. I hope I have been a good friend. The loss of a friend is like losing a limb. Time may heal the anguish, but the loss can never be repair, repaired. Fare thee well, Karo Mwale Wagesho. So now we are going to sing our school's hymn. And uh, we are here, I vow to thee my country. I'm sure, as you all know, Kenya High School was associated with Wazungu. And this song is, of course, loyalty to your nation and loyalty to God. So we are going to sing. And I'll ask, who is it? Yeah. Gloria, Gloria. Oh, Ma Margaret will lead us because she's in the choir. Yes, OK, let us sing this. Actually, Mudoni has said it all, isn't it? Yes. Yes, we salute you, Carol. Rest in peace. OK, let's sing. I vow to thee, my country, all earthly things above. And farewell, Carol. To Doc, please keep us as your friends. We want to remain in your lives. Thank you. Anna Jero. Anna Jero of CW Gedai. Good afternoon, all of us, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends. Uh, we are the colleagues of our late CW Gidal. Uh, we are Sandend. And OK, here I read our short, it, it is short, but it doesn't mean what she, does to, she did to us was short. We've tried to summarize. Today, we gather to honor the memory of our extraordinary bulls, Mrs. Gidai. Her presence was a beacon of empathy and charisma in our workplace. She treated us like family, and her kindness knew no bounds. 
Mrs. Gedai had a magnetic charisma that could turn challenges in oppo into opportunities, and an infectious smile lit up our lives. She had an exceptional ability to understand and support us personally and professionally. As we bid her farewell, we will feel the immense void her absence leaves us, leaves behind. We will miss her, her wisdom, her laughter, her unwavering support. However, her legacy lives on in the kindness and the warmth, warmth she shared with us. We extend our heartfelt condolences to the family. May she rest in eternal peace and may her memory continue to inspire us. You have left an indelible mark on our hearts. Fear thee well, dear Cinder Bridge. Uh, thank you. Uh, the President of Law Society of Kenya, Manayel Kigidai, kindly come over and represent the Rigo Fraternity. God is good, and all the time. The provost and the assistant provost, uh, Mr. Gidai and uh, your children, and the extended family, my colleagues, uh, senior council present, and the members of uh, the congregation, I've just been baptized, Mr. Gidai. My name is Eric Theory, president of uh, the Law Society. And I'm here on my behalf and on behalf of the entire fraternity of uh, the legal profession. And may I just ask them to stand. I have uh, seen we also have a number of judges within the congregation. They also belong to the Law Society. I'll ask the, all the members who are here to stand. Thank you so much. Uh, may you have your seats for cheer them on. Uh, Provost, I know we are running short of time, and I have a speech here which, if I was to read, it would take me about three hours. And as lawyers, we uh, find it extremely difficult when you tell us to take two minutes, because uh, it is almost... Uh, impossible for a lawyer to speak for that short a time. After all, we make our craft and bread uh, from speaking. But allow me, uh, in the interest of time, to thank the family for giving us an opportunity to come and say farewell to our friend and as members of the legal profession, we consider one another as part of the family of law. And so therefore when we lose one of our members, the loss is individual to each and every one of us. So we feel your pain, we feel your grief, we grieve with you, and we pray that the soul of our dear departed sister would rest in eternal peace. So much 
has been said about Ms. Githai. I particularly remember every time we would meet at the Supreme Court parking. And uh, she, even if you are in a rush, you just had to stand and listen to her words of wisdom. She was deeply, deeply concerned about the practice of law. She really loved the law. And any time there were issues, practical issues, she would always take her time to call. Or when we meet, she's like, you know, I've been looking for you. There's this issue. How are you doing this? Are you addressing this? Are you addressing this? And I find it rather interesting uh, when uh, the tributes were being read. Uh, everyone says that she had time and a lot of time for, for them too. And truly, she was a, a remarkable lady. She probably had 48 hours in a day while the rest of us, Mayor Motors, had 24 hours. So I know that we will miss her dearly. But she will remain in our hearts because of the good deeds uh, that uh, she did, her character, her love for the law, and most importantly, our integrity. So on behalf of the Law Society, we pass our heartfelt condolences to the family, to the friends, to the church, and we say, Mwenyezimungu, Ailaze, Roweake, Mwendazake, Caroline, Gedae, until we meet again on the other side. Thank you, church. Asante sana, Mr. President. Umepitisha tu kidogo. <laughs> you managed it. So we thank you. Uh, Caro was not only a member of All Saints Cathedral, but at some point she served in the governance council of this church. We call it PCC, or Parochial Church Council. And at some point she was the legal advisor to the provost and the Currently, that position is held by one of you, Reverend uh, Beatrice Meso. And on behalf of the former council members, we're going to invite our brother Sam Kiraka to come and share a tribute on behalf of all the ex-PCC members. Karibu Sam. Okay. Good afternoon, church. Yeah, Sam Kiraka is my name. I was very privileged to have uh, known Caro and worked very closely with her. Um, condolences to you, Dr. Barnard, your children, and our two grandchildren. We really feel the deep loss as a church. Uh, personally, I met Caro um, in the early 2000s when I was working in the insurance industry, and like you've heard, that's also a bit of where she started. And therefore, it's been a journey of just about 23 years since we, we connected. And I was very happy to have met her here again when I came to join uh, on the leadership. And um, she, she, she had been identified by the provost then, Reverend Kanon Sami Wainaina, as a legal mind that is dedicated, that gives counsel even when she's outside. Before she could come into the council, she could give advice. Maybe this is what I'm seeing. Have you looked at this? Have you addressed this? And the provost then said, please come. So she was nominated to the council. And some of the things I remember that Caro did uh, with my colleagues on the council at that point um, was during the AGM, she would be part of the you know, returning officer, Maneno. So you would have a returning officer, and she would be assisting. We do our voting here as a, at the AGM, which you do annually. And she would sit there just ensuring that the process is, is being done well. She was a stickler to the process and the systems and ensured that the corporate governance you talk about out there, the legal things you talk about out there, are actually ingrained uh, in the church. And for that, we will continue to remember. Even after she stopped serving, she continued to assist in ensuring that uh, the cathedral runs on that terrain. 
But more importantly is that when she sat uh, on, the, on, the, on the PCC, uh, the PCC is the governing council where you have the elected members that I've talked about and she would be nominated to come and serve. One of the things I noted about Caro over the years was her diligence to time. Our meetings start at, started at seven in the morning and they still do. There was no virtual then, so she would drive from Karen and she lives in the farthest corner. Uh, from the current crowd that uh, sat on the PCC at that point, and she will still get here before us. So she was very dedicated in term, terms of time management. She was a great counselor. She would talk to us even as a, as a PCC, not just about uh, the legal matters, but she would talk to us also about the HR matters, and she got cooperated into the HR committee. So some of us who were accountants and uh, had no clue about HR, she was able to bring that early enough uh, as we engaged on the HR. And what sing I single out and as a counsel at that point when she served on the HR committee was the balance between counseling from a church perspective. This is an employee who works for the church, right? But they need to go through a session to be able to be put on the straight and narrow. So there's the legal aspects around it, but there's the spiritual aspects around this because you work for the church and how you intertwine this. And Carol was very able to help us navigate that with employees here, encouraging them, supporting them. Even those who separate with, she was able to follow up with them and see how they're getting on. So we saw and we received a lot of benefit from, from that perspective about, about Carol. The other thing that she was very diligent with is the commercial aspects of the church. You see, if the church doesn't meet physically and offertory doesn't come like now comes on online and all, all this M-Pesa story, previously people would have just come to church and gone home. So what Carol would do is to ensure that because the church needs to generate other income to support mission, ensure that the contracts that we sign are commercially viable you know, protecting the church, protecting the client, because that's a legal mind uh, that Carol had and she brought into the, into, the, into the church, giving it some good corporate governance aspects and some good legal backing in everything that she did. Whether it was on the CTC, our new project there, or on the contracts with the MPH, our school in Madraka in terms of the land, you know, how, how are the titles looking, are the rates paid, that was your headmaster, so to speak, you know, just ensuring that everything is working meticulously. Are the rates paid? Are the council rates paid? Are the land rates paid? You know, where are we on this? What's our tax obligation, if any, as a church? What exemptions do we have? So she was that kind of a person to support us. So in a nutshell, in the interest of time, we saw a mentor in Cairo, a great, um, she would, of course, get in our, into our lives. Uh, every time we had something as a council we needed to consult on, she would come there and give us wise counsel. And when she left after the night, after serving for six years, of course, she got a commendation by the provost and the church for an excellent job done back in 2019 is when she exited having served for six years from 2013 to 2019, as it has been said. And of course, knowing Carol, she wouldn't just leave you. She had to mentor somebody and work with her. And of course, then uh, left us a, some, a younger lawyer who she had mentored to fit her big shoes. So as we say, and as we say a bit farewell to our friend and colleague, Carol, we say that, yeah, she's been diligent, she's been dedicated, and she's been a commit mem very committed member to our, to our church. Even when we went to online systems, she was the first to say, you know, how do we protect ourselves? How do we ensure that we have uh, very good, robust systems around corporate governance, financial management, and all that? So it stepped out, not just in the legal, but she lo looked at it also. So we appreciate the services that Carol has given this church very dedicated, brought in Dr. brought in the children over the years. They've grown here. They've been part of our ministry activities when they were younger. And we really want to thank God and pray that we'll continue to work together, Dr. in the days ahead. Thank you very much. May God bless you. And we pray that uh, Carol's soul rests at the feet of Jesus, where we will meet in the days to come. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Sam, for being able to capture Carol's contribution to the church in very few words. Thank you very much. I uh, want to appreciate everybody who has come into this uh, celebration, but allow me to, in a special way, recognize a few leaders that we've been able to pick from where we are seated. We want to appreciate the presence of Justice Christine Maori, uh, Justice 
James Rika, Justice Emeritus Bogori Msaga, Justice Emeritus Nancy Barasa, and Honorable Mutahi Kagwe, former CS Health. Uh, at this time, we want to welcome Karen Fellowship, where Caro used to fellowship every week. I'm a member of that, that fellowship. Uh, on behalf of the fellowship, uh, the fellowship leader, John Getonga, will give a tribute. Uh, but I would like to request all the members of current fellowship to come over as John reads uh, our tribute, our collective tribute. Afternoon, church. Um, my name is John Gitonga. I'm uh, privileged to be the leader of current fellowship. If you see behind me, standing behind me, are some really esteemed people, uh, leaders in the church. And uh, we, we are going to present a tribute, a brief tribute of Carol, uh, consolidated from 18 of us and 18 members of, of uh, our fellowship. Now, as we are the current fellowship uh, cell group of All Saints Cathedral that Carol belonged to. We met every Tuesday evening, and Carol introduced most of us uh, members to the fellowship. She was consistently present and on time. We enjoyed not only the studying of God's word, but also the samosas and boiled maize that came thereafter. And sometimes, of course, we got carried away after when we were enjoying the refreshments. Before the COVID-19, uh, COVID all our meetings were held in person, hosted by our captain, uh, Canon John and uh, Rhoda Wairumbi. And Carol would occasionally ask if there was space to accommodate more people. Indeed, we bring our condolences to Dr. Githai, um, Jengi, Mo, and Wa, and pray that the Lord would strengthen you at this time. As a fellowship, we have been hard hit Indeed, we are still trying to come to terms with her departure. We will miss Carol big time. Here is a summary of some of the tributes penned down by members. Carol was faithful in following up on issues and on people who needed help. And a shoulder to lean on. She kept tabs on all of us in current fellowship and ensured that we were always present. She followed up on those who are not attending always so concerned, and indeed the last time we were to meet was on uh, October 10th, when uh, we were late and Carol uh, just uh, decided that we actually called it off because it was a holiday. But being so concerned, she espoused the giving of yourself. She was not afraid to correct or to speak the truth into a situation. She had an infectious laughter. Indeed, when we christened her uh, CJ, because that's what we used to call her sometimes, she would laugh in a very polite manner and joke she had for every situation. She had an ability to connect with all age groups, always had a word, even if she had just been introduced. Words to describe Carol, selfless, a diligent legal professional, a great legal guide on the All Saints Cathedral Parish Council, especially in the business, property, and human resources matters. She was a great team member. She had a big heart. She checked on our families, always followed up on our parents and with our children, especially during national exams, praying daily for each of them by name and for their respective papers. She was a warm and authentic, personable spirit. She had a deep concern at an individual level for those she met she was a fellowship, a faithful friend, a big sister, a gallant soldier in the Lord's army who fulfilled the Great Commission. Carol was such a dignified woman, a woman who had the wisdom to enrich a family of group in a very special and personal way. 
She was very intentional in her discipleship ministry to reach out and check if all was okay. Indeed, Carol was also a most trusted, confident, a beacon of hope. She had words for every occasion and a language for every age. She was soft-spoken as wool, but firm as a rock. A member of the fellowship said this, we had fun together, we cried together, we prayed together, we have had many victories at Jesus' feet, and for that, I am eternally grateful. You have fiercely protected us, you have fierce, freely guided us publicly and privately, you have provided free legal advice to our families, you have stepped in moments of total darkness, when we ourselves were, had a loss so huge we did not know how to progress. Another fellowship member in the U.S. who is now um, in the U.S., she said, I would like to extend my deepest condolences to the family of uh, Carol Gidai. She was an amazing person and my mentor in the profession. I will always remember her laughter, humility, and advice during our weekly fellowship meetings at Karen Fellowship and her support of our family. Carol, we will miss you, your humble chastening. We are grateful for the time he has given you to be with us and the lessons that you have taught us. It is more blessing to give than to receive. That is what you taught us. That others' needs are more important than ours are. You will forever be in our hearts. We choose to remember you, Carol, that you have fought the good fight and finished your race. Now there is in store for you a crown of righteousness. You are strong to the very end, and you are now at Jesus' feet. We know that the laughter continues in your father's house, where Jesus promised to have room for those who believe. Our beloved friend, Carol, thank you for your friendship. You may have left us far too soon, but your loving presence will endure forever in our hearts and souls. Fear thee well, Carol, until we meet again. Godspeed. We will also sing a song to remember Carol with, a hymn that she really loved, that we sang every Tuesday.
Thank you, Karen Fellowship. Uh, this is the team that prayed with Caro and continues to pray for the family. We have seen God come through for us. I've been to Somalia three years, and this is the team that was praying for me when I was in the trenches, and Caro used to call every now and then to know how we are faring. Um, and thank you for that. We are going to have the final tribute uh, brought by Sophie Masharia. I think it's on behalf of Octaned Group. Uh, I believe that we will keep it short so that after that we have scripture reading, we hear the word of God, and we pray for the family. As I look for my short write-up, I'd like my group members and friends of the Octomed group to please come and give me support. Please, thank you. I'm looking for it on my phone. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, in front of you is a wonderful group that we have, and friends of this group, we call ourselves Octamed. Briefly, Octamed is a group that has grown effortlessly in the last 40 years plus. It goes back beyond the 40 years to individual friendships of young teenagers that met at Form 1, others at A-level, others at first year medical school, and yet others during courtship and marriage. What has glued the group together over the decades is simple, true friendship, care, and concern for one another. The family of Dr. Bernard Gedai and his wife, Carol, are members of the six families of Octamed and the extended friends of Octamed. We have literally walked the journey of life together from young classmates, schoolmates, dating youth, couples, young parents, and for a few of us now, mothers and fathers of young adults, in-laws, and grandparents. We have over the years enjoyed a once a month Sunday lunch with our children, a once a month dinner without our children, family fun travels, fun travels and getaways without our children quarterly goat feasts at our respective residences in which friends of Octamed that stand with me here frequent and regular parents visit whenever our parents are or were in Kenya. We are also godparents and mentors of each other's children. Octamed has been hit hard by losing Carol, especially since just a little more than a year ago, we lost yet another member, Dr. Mike Mogo. Carol held a special place in Octamed. When we were younger, the Octamed women knew that Carol would mother hen all our children when we were on trips away from home. Especially when they were in the swimming pool, we all knew that as long as Carol was there, <coughs> nothing would go wrong. As our children got older, Carol never shied away from correcting them if they went off lane. Carol had no excesses like some of us. She was simple and never complicated herself with jewelry, makeup, or fashion. Life was never about her. Indeed, she hardly ever spoke about her health situation to any of us deeply, choosing instead to focus on other matters outside of herself. Carol enjoyed a good chat with whoever she sat next to in the various get-togethers that, that we've had over the years. She put even strangers at ease 
and had long conversations with them whenever she met one. She especially had an easy time with our parents as she engaged with them with easy chat and laughter. To Caro, Octamed was her extended family. The godmothers of her daughters are all here in Octamed. Even her best couple that, uh, when they renewed their wedding vows, is standing here. Caro, how could you walk so strong even when you were so unwell? But that was Caro for you. She did things her way. As you journey back to our maker, who will gladly welcome you with open arms, don't be worried, Caro, about Ben and the girls. Octamed will always be their home. From Octamedians, the six families, Professor, Fest, Professor Duni and Dr. Festa Silako, Professor Masharia and myself, Sophie, Dr. Ben Gidai and, and Caro, uh, Dr. Paul Ngugi and Lucy, Dr. David and Professor Jesse Gedanga, and Dr. Ann Gwithi and the late Dr. Ngwithi. The rest of them are all here, family, friends, doctor friends, and maybe I could ask the rest of the doctors that have come here to support Dr. Gedai, please stand up and just give and show your support and care for him. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Octamed, even for keeping your tribute brief. At this time, allow me also to appreciate the presence of Lady Justice Anne Mwaure. We are going to hear the scripture reading brought to us by Abigail Mwehaki and Bernard Karaoke. Abigail Mwehaki will do the first reading, and Bernard Karaoke will do the second scripture reading. After that, we'll do a hymn and hear the word of God. A reading from the book of Philippians, chapter 1, verse 19 to 26. For I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out to be my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but I will have sufficient courage so that now and as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live, in Christ, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet, what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But, is, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your, prog for your progress and, and joy in faith, so that through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will be abound on account of me. The word of the Lord. Good afternoon. Our second reading comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 1 to 11. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 1 to 11. Father, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it's a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs, those evildoers, those mutilators of the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, we who serve God by his spirit, who boost in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh. Though I myself have reasons for such confidence. If someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, 
a Hebrew of Hebrews in regards to the law, a Pharisee as for zeal, persecuting the church as is for righteousness based on the law, faultless. But whenever we gain to me, I now consider laws for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sakes I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but with which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. And that's the word of God. Uh, we are going now to hear the word of God brought to us by our provost, the provost of this uh, National Cathedral of All Saints, Nairobi, the very reverend Canon Evans Omoro. And to prepare us hearts and ourselves to hear the word of God, I invite us all to stand as we are led by the choir to sing him, How Great Thou Art.
the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Speak to our hearts, dear Lord, and as we desire to pattern our lives after your word that was exemplified by our dear sister Carol, to the glory of your name, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And, and again, our very sincere condolences to the Gidais. Um, been a heavy week, preceded by some two equally very heavy week, uh, two heavy weeks. As I share God's word, I seek your indulgence graciously to allow me read a tribute sent by my predecessor, Canon Sami Wainaina, who worked with Carol. Sam Kiraka has shared a lot about what Carol meant to the council, but Provost just sent me this from London, and I'll read quickly. The world has good people. One thing we always cherish, no matter what life sends, is some memory of happiness of a friend. That is the way I choose to remember Carol. We worked together for many years in the leadership of the cathedral, uh, named after all saints in Nairobi and we became friends. Apart from the leadership and the legal matters of the parish council that she was so dedicated to, she would come to my office to check on me. She was concerned about my family. She asked about each of them by name. She gave me feedback from what the congregants would say about my ministry and when people were blessed through our television services. She always called me to give me feedback and encourage me. Whenever she came to my office, she would look at, at me and ask, Provost, when is the last time you took a break? Did you have time for your family? She always knew when I was tired and overburdened by the cathedral work and would recommend me for a two-day break. As the legal advisor of the council, Carol was disciplined, dedicated, and strict, yet approachable and concerned about the welfare of the cathedral staff. She was highly respected by the members of the parish council, and we all sought her wisdom. She had the best interest of the cathedral. Many times, I met Carol at the car park at the cathedral, coming for bereavement meetings of, for friends and family members. She carried other people's burdens with courage and grace. Carol was dedicated to her husband, uh, Dr. Bernard Gedai, whom she sat with every Sunday. And for those who don't come to the cathedral, Dr. Gedai and Carol sat somewhere there, about four pews to my left, just as you're about to exit. Every single time, Sunday, you'll find them there. And that's what the Proverbs is saying here. She loved her daughters and wanted the best for them. Heaven must be a good place, because it seems good people go there. Carol was such. On behalf of myself, my wife Beatrice, and our children, we send our love and condolences to the Gedais and to the immediate family of Carol and to the extended family and to the family of All Saints Cathedral. You have lost a very good and dedicated servant of God. Until we meet again, Carol, be in God's presence. Sent by the Reverend Canon Dr. Sami Wainaina from Lambeth Palace, London. I now share God's word from the readings Ebly brought to us. And in the space of time I have, I'll share two things from the phrase in Philippians chapter, chapter 1, uh, verse 21. Verse 21 says this, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Now, why would Paul make such a statement? I want to separate those two. So share, firstly, on the phrase, for me to live is Christ. And ask the question, why is Paul in prison with the prospects of death so near him, yet look up to Christ and say, for him to live is Christ? 
Actually, you find that answer in several places in scripture said by Paul himself. The first place you find the answer to that first part of verse 21 is in the preceding verse, verse 20. Verse 20 says, and I'll pick the last part, in New King James Version, King James Version, and other versions that take after the two, it uses a word that I want to pick. According to my aunt's expectation and hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. So Paul uses the word magnify. NIV translates that as exalted. Christ is exalted. But I like the New King James Version or King James Version. Christ is magnified. And that really is the reason why Paul says for him to live is Christ. And I want to explain the connection between those two. Magnify and living for Christ. Do you know, to magnify is to make something that ordinarily is smaller look bigger. You have this tool called the telescope. The telescope is small, but its genius is in bringing objects that look so far and small much closer and enable them to look bigger. So the telescope magnifies. It's akin to the magnifying glass, making things bigger. Do you know, friends, as we live this life, there are so many, many people in the world who think that Jesus is so insignificant and a mere historical figure who is irrelevant to the happenings of our lives today. Others consider Jesus to be an intrusion into the comfort of people's lives today. Others think that Jesus is actually not worth the fame that the world has given him. And therefore, to them, especially non-believers, Jesus is irrelevant and insignificant. Paul lived in that context where Christ was shoved to the side and other things exalted and magnified to be more important than faith. Do you know what Paul says gives him the reason to want to live is that he may magnify Jesus. In verse 20 he says, I want, I want to magnify Christ in life and in death. And therefore in verse 21 he says, for me to live is Jesus Christ. Why? Because in the face of a world that rubbishes Jesus, he wants Christ to be known that his life may be a telescope that brings Christ who looks so distant much closer to people who do not know Jesus that their blood vision of who Jesus is may be cleared and that they may see Jesus clearer and better. And that is why, in another verse that seeks to really speak into why Christ wants to, Paul wants to live for Christ, in verse 8 of chapter 3, he says, from verse 7, he says, I count everything rubbish. The things that were gained to me, these things, I count them my loss. Other versions say rubbish for the sake of Christ. So in verse 8, he says, yet I count all things loss for the sake of knowing Christ. So why is Paul so passionate about Jesus? Because for him, Jesus is the reason and the solution to the myriad problems that affect humanity. When I listen to the stories told about Carol, one word that defines her for me, and I worked with her for three years in the council, in all those meetings that Sam mentioned, in those, all those experiences that Canon Sammy mentioned. I worked with her for three years. And coupled with the things that I've had said here, validated by the family, one word that defines Caro for me is magnify. 
that she lived to magnify Jesus. That in the space of time she had, she ensured that she became a telescope that brought Jesus nearer and made him bigger and clearer to people who ever doubted Jesus. I heard Hugo say that she's yet to meet anyone say anything negative about her mom. And actually, if you interacted with Carol, you'd struggle to pick something negative about her because she was so gracious, as we have shared. She carried Christ in totality in her body. And if you ever doubted that, her consistency in attending this cathedral. But you know, that's just an outward look. As I said, she sat there. Every time we recessed here, she, I'll see her on my left eye, just there, and with Dr. Getai, and I'll bow, and she'll acknowledge, and they'll acknowledge the greetings as we exit. That is external. But if you want to go deeper to verify that that was not just a religious facade that she wore for people to see, look at her in BSF. Listen to her stories in BSF. And by the way, if you ever found a BSFer who is a joker and playing around, then maybe they're not BSFers. Because BSFers are known for depth in faith and depth in the things of God. And that tells you that she was a woman who loved Christ and sought to allow Christ to be magnified through her. You look at how she gave herself, even to the ministry we gave here, at a very personal level, I was saying on, 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 on Wednesday, she will send me feedback, back one after another, feedback, and you've heard Sammy say here as well, feedback, appreciation for the things that I said, and she'll speak into particular things that blessed her. She'll collect a lot of feedback that you gave her, you, you are lawyer, her lawyer friends, that I was with my friend so and so, she watched your homily, and this is what she said. And so she would go deeper with faith. We, our hearts were so warmed. Yesterday when we visited uh, the family in Karen, and they confirmed that resolute, unashamed faith that their mother had. And you have heard how Wairimu has mentioned that her mother taught her that work and service and everything you do is about worship. And yesterday they told us their mother ensured that they were grounded and formed in the faith. That you'd have, you know, those eyes of, uh, of uh, referees of football. You may think they're looking this way, but they're seeing everything everywhere. That even in church here, they'll know whether you are seated at the corner, you keep walking in and out, she'll know. Whether you've gone for Holy Communion and interrogation, cross-examination will happen when you go back home. Why, why didn't you go for Communion today? Why were you walking up and about? What's wrong with you? Why were you not singing that song? You don't know that song, and you are an Anglican. I mean, that tells you that she desired the best for her, for her children. So that word for me, that Paul uses there, that Carol lived to magnify Christ. And in her, you see Jesus radiate right here. And that is why for us, it is extreme joy to have her here in a church that she attended every single Sunday, every Monday for BSF, every day for any church activity that happened here. And that for me is a great joy and a celebration that from this church named after all saints, we are releasing a soldier, a servant who gave herself here, that this becomes her springboard to her place of rest in Yeri before we await the glorious term trumpet that we'll call. So number one, Paul says he wants to for him to live is Christ, and that living for him, he's magnifying the Lord. The second one, he says, and to die is gain. Verse, uh, the second part of verse 21, to die is gain. What does that mean? It means that Paul had so much confidence in his personal relationship with God that he was very sure about eternity. You know, when I, when I came to the Lord uh, as a young 18-year-old boy, we were told, eh, unajua umeokoka tu juzi? Usiseme kwa hakika sana? Unajua unaweza backslide? Ukose kuenda mbinguni? Wee, sema kwa tashu, sema mungu wa kijalia? Usikuwe na sure, don't be too sure. 
But the more I was discipled in the faith, I realized, come on, this thing, you must draw the line. I am saved. I am a believer headed to heaven. You know, I can go this way. I'm not even married. I can backslide, do this, or I can go this way. Paul was not katikati. Yeah, he drew the line, and he knew he's a believer. And that's why in chapter 3, that was read to us, he says, he says, I count all things a loss for the sake of knowing Christ. That I count them rubbish because of Jesus. In, in verse 10, he says, I want to know Christ to be found in him. He's so resolute. For me, that defines Carol. A woman who knew the Lord, and therefore, even as death called, she was so confident. And these girls really entertained us. We had a wonderful time yesterday in the house. I mean, you hear the confidence of Carol, even in death. Many of you have shared here that you never knew that she carried an infirmity in her body because of the faith she had. From 2013, she's carried that and she's gone through processes of treatment. Even in the, in the last couple of weeks, she's, she's been battling cancer. Just about two weeks ago before she died, she was here. So as much as her body was growing weaker, but her faith in the Lord was stronger, we are being told, she's giving even instructions. You know, she's in hospital. I'm, I'm doing this, but you know, on Sunday I'm going to church. And she's so sure that about her life and her connection with the Lord that even death now comes and finds her so confident and so sure of her walk with the Lord. And therefore... For her, even death is gain. For Wanjiru, death is not a loss because of that faith. You can't, you can't give yourself that much. And then we begin to say here, we are not sure. There's a moment you feel, there are moments that you feel. And I know people who've worked with her at, at, the, at the law firm. Those of you who journeyed with her side by side, a pure heart, a clean heart. And that gives her the confidence to say, even death, I will not fear. Assistant Provost and I visited her in the ICU, found her sleeping calm with the wires all over, but sleeping calm. And I saw a soldier in her final journey in the Lord. And so let me conclude by saying this. Paul says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Today, we exalt so many different things as we diminish the faith. I don't know. What can you say about yourself? Can you say, for me to live is money and to die is to leave it behind? Do you know the people whose philosophy is that? For me to live is money. We'll make it through hook and crook. And to die is the pain of leaving it behind. I don't know. I don't know, beloved, whether for you you'll say, for me to live is fame, and to die is to be forgotten. You know, there are many of us who live for fame. They breathe aura, they come with oomph, and they shove everyone, and they dominate. They want to be felt and to be seen. I'm struggling with that. I, I, I became provost here about three months ago, so still learning. But everywhere you go, people want to say, oh, we have the provost here. This is a man of God. They want to use all those many adjectives. I say, God, why, why don't you just say, please, Evans, we welcome you. Come and speak. And that is something that I'll push back a little. So when I push back, please accept. Because, you know, this facade of you are there, you are there, it's fame that sometimes makes us live empty, and become shells that when you're about to die, we realize, eh, who will remember me in hell? Who will salute me in hell? Who will remove the coffee for me in hell? So for you, for, for me to live is fame and to die is, is that your mantra? There are many of us who would say, for me to live is power and to die is to lose it all. I don't know. I don't know. Some of us have in government, high places in the judiciary, very influential places in the corporate sector. There's a lot of power around those positions. I don't know. Paul says, 
For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. This Jesus that we preach is the most important thing. Paul says, I count everything rubbish that I may know Christ alone. One thing I ask of us as we remember Kara and celebrate her, and as we comfort the family, is that may we consider Carol's Jesus, allow me to call him so, may we consider the Jesus that Carol stood with, that Carol worshipped. Consider this Jesus. He's beautiful, he's fine, and he'll make a difference. Amen? Amen? I share this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You know, I always say that uh, if you are Pentecostals, you'd have encouraged me by clapping. <laughs> but, but many of you, <laughs> many of you, the problem, your Anglicans are Catholics, where we don't clap for the pastor. <laughs> Encouraging the pastors as in Guinea. Anyway. <laughs> I invite us now towards the end to stand. We give our offerings. Uh, in the spirit of generosity of Mama Mugure and Mama Hiko and Mama Wairimu, we will give our offerings as we say bye to this wonderful lady. Uh, there's a pay bill that is projected. Uh, there's a pay bill that is projected, but also there is a basket that will be put up here. Please feel free to just walk up and turn back. Just walk up. I'm waiting for the vergers. I can't see anything or... Oh, there are bags. Okay. I'm told the bags are going round. I beg your pardon. So the bags are going round. Just drop in your sadaka or on the, on the screen. There will be a pay bill uh, as, we, as we sing.
Amen. Lord, for the gifts that you have given us, part of which we now give here in memory of Carl, receive with gratitude from our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We are just about to finish. We want to pray for, <coughs> for the family. Reverend Alfred Appella, uh, one of our pastors here, will lead us in that prayer. Uh, if there's any minister, any pastor here, please in the congregation, just join us up here as we stretch our hands over the family. My colleagues, let's just come around the family as we pray for them. After this, then we quickly have the vote of thanks and uh, the announcements by our two senior councils. We will view, so please don't rush. Uh, don't rush. Let us pray. Receive our thanks, O Lord, today, and grant that we shall treasure the memories of Carol with sadness and with joy, that we are blessed to know her and share in her life. Lord Jesus, we grant, we ask that you grant that we who are still alive be constantly reminded that life is short. And that, Lord, by learning this, we shall constantly walk in the footsteps of Jesus Christ and in the footsteps that Carol emulated by making the best use of her time and her giftings within the cathedral and the precincts of this country. Merciful God, we pray that you whose wisdom is beyond our understanding the Lord will deal graciously with Carol's family in their grief. We ask that the Holy Spirit, who is the comforter and the counselor to them that believe in God, will protect them, that they will be not overwhelmed with sorrow, and that Lord shall grant them peace that surpasses all understanding and the strength to meet the days ahead. Since you're the God of all consolation, we pray this, that Lord, in your unending love and mercy, that Lord, you'll turn this season of grief to the dawn of new life. We pray that Lord, you shall show compassion to the Gidai family. And that, Lord, you shall be their refuge and their strength to lift them from the darkness of grief to the peace and light of your presence. So, God, we ask that, Lord, these prayers that we have made, may these be received in heaven for your glory. Because we've humbly asked and prayed this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We <clears throat> thank you, uh, Reverend Alfred. We now want to welcome Senior Counsel, uh, Madam Lucy Kambuni, to come and, uh, on behalf of the family, share a vote of thanks, after which immediately uh, Senior Counsel uh, Fred Ngatia will come to give us announcements. If we make it short and not new attributes, we will appreciate. Thank you. You can, use, you can even use this one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Reverend. <sighs> yes, it's okay. Uh, Lucy Kambuni, but more than that, I love the Lord so, so deeply as my personal savior. And as we sit here and as we celebrate the life of Carol, I think it's for each and every one of us to ask ourselves, should the Lord God Almighty choose from this beautiful garden that is here, choose any of us? Because Carol 
Caro is me, Caro is Wanja, Caro is Jerry, Caro is Jesse's Msaga Mbogoli, who we used to joke with. Caro is each and every one of us. And let, when the Lord returns and calls each one of us, may we be found about the business of the Lord. And so, Caro, my dear partner, Caro, I was partner with Caro in the firm of Kambuni and Gedaya Advocates for 15 years. And we are the advocates that are in the business of drafting partnership deeds. Caro's partnership deed with me was inked by the Lord God Almighty because it was founded on faith in Christ, love for family, professionalism, uh, respect for each other, honesty, and in all those 15 years, and I speak knowing that the Holy Spirit is in here. You've, you've heard what has been said about Caro. And so I am speaking the truth. Not one day, not one second, did Caro and I argue about money, argue about a legal brief, argue about anything. In fact, if you came to our office, it was the second sana. Now, for those the young ones that do not know what Sana was. It was that eatery across the street where lawyers used to love to go half tea and mandazi after uh, uh, coming out of the, of, the, of, of the courtrooms. Now, our office was that little Sana where women advocates and men advocates sometimes would come and we would chat and we would dream and we would correct each other and we would learn. And the advocates who are here, especially the ladies, uh, will confirm that was the position. So I speak and I am so honored to be giving this vote of thanks for Caro. I, I, I actually, you know, it's, it's surreal, but you know what? We serve a living savior, a living God, and I have no doubt whatsoever exactly what Caro is doing right now. So we thank the Lord so, so deeply for Caro, for her life. You know, Caro, a woman of faith, as I said, we had no partnership deed. Ours was what the lawyers called a, a partnership deed sui generis. So we are lawyers who speak that by a means of a very special kind. You know, it, if it's founded on faith, as you have heard, that is who Caro was. So when we are here at Austin's Cathedral, much as I do not want to dismiss the symbolic, it is actually, um, it is, it is, we are here because it is the reality of Caro and her faith. And that is the legacy of faith that she lives with Daktari, with the three girls, with uh, her grandchildren, and for generations to come. You know, this legacy of faith, if any of you girls should, should, should totter to the left or to the right, it will not be because your mother did not leave you a legacy of faith, Daktari. So let us carry that. Now, the Wamotegi family, we cannot thank you enough. You um, shared with the royal family a most beautiful, beautiful person who has nurtured both families in equal measure. So uh, the Yedai family is so, 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 so deeply, deeply grateful the royal clan for the fact that you gave them the GO of the Wamotegi family. Not to say that the others are not GOs, they all are GOs in God's standing. Now, the All Saints Cathedral, yes, you have offered excellent support. And I looked at the meeting rooms that we had, I could tell that you laid out the best for your best. And so thank you so, so very much, the provost. I will call you by your titles because those were handed to you. The very Reverend Canon Evans Omolo. Thank you very, very much. And the assistant provost, provost James Kanye, uh, you have faithfully uh, attended at the uh, family home. I know you 
you gave a devotion when um, the class of 84 and other advocates uh, went to condole with the family. So thank you, thank you very, very much. The Bible study of, um, of All Saints Cathedral, the women's ministry, we heard that Carol was part of the women's ministry, and this lovely choir that has belted out the tunes of heaven. Imagine Carol is listening to greater tunes than this. Can you believe that? Thank you, thank you very much, choir. Now, the team of doctors that cared for our sister Carol, Dr. Gladwell Kiari, thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. And the community of doctors are married to one so I know. These doctors basically gave Carol the very best that they could offer. And we knew that if there was anything, absolutely anything they could have done, they would have done it for Carol. So thank you very much, Dr. Gladwell Kiari, Dr. Wanyoike, Dr. Olunya, Nasi Rongo at the blood unit. Thank you, thank you so very much. The, the, the family is truly, truly grateful. Now, the legal fraternity has been excellent, and they have come out in full throttle for one of our own. And I, uh, I firstly want to thank the Honorable, the Chief Justice, uh, Mother Karambu Kome, when I sent a message to her and informed her about the loss we had suffered. She gave us a tribute, uh, a message of condolences for the family, which we delivered. Then the Honorable Solicitor General um, Shad Shadrach Mose spoke to me and he was really, really, really sad that Carol had passed. And he sent his message of condolences, which I delivered to the family and also supported the family. Then there is a class of 84 to which Carol belonged. Um, these are the advocates, the ones we got admitted in 1985, many of us. And so uh, thank you, thank you, class of 84, for your generous um, contribution, for the prayers. Imagine for the very first time, our class had never held a prayer meeting, our classmates. But for the very first time, we held a virtual prayer meeting where we prayed and prayed earnestly for Cairo. And we do know that the Lord did that which was right. He is the keeper of our times and we do not argue with him. He remains sovereign and we love him. So uh, class of 84, thank you. The senior council bar, when we shared this message with them, lovely messages of support for the family and um, this was shared with the family. Then there is the senior bar also. These are the advocates who've practiced for more than 25 years. Again, they did that. And thank you, thank you judges, the ones who are here. We really, really, really appreciate you. In fact, that is where I should have gone first, but I'm glad that the provost has told us that in the end, it is you and I, our titles aside, let us deal with God. Now, um, I have already spoken about the doctors. I will not repeat that. Then the various service providers, caterers, flowers, thank you so very much. Then Octamed, this lovely family that has stood together for all these years and that has provided a beautiful canopy for themselves first, for their children, for their children's children, and have been in each other's lives for as long as it was possible to be. And so Carol uh, is a member of that family. And so the Gedai family, you will never lack. And you will never lack fellowship or presence of family because Octamed has, remains, and will be with you. So thank you, thank you very much, Octamed, and, their, and friends of Octamed. Now, there are friends from far and wide who have prayed, mobilized resources, financial. When we called for a blood donation, they were there to give it. Thank you, the, thank you very much. The Bomerians, you've outdone yourselves, and I'm like, hey, we need to do something at the group. What were we called in Alliance? We need to do something. I have looked at your community of togetherness here and been challenged. 
Now, there is another group that we always forget about, and these are friends and family who, despite our putting a notice out, an obituary notice, despite the WhatsApp and everything else, they actually do not know that Carol has passed. And we will meet them hereafter, and they will be like, why did you not tell me? Now, there are many of those, and I keep remembering them, but this morning, I remembered one as I was coming to the Ossens Cathedral. This is Jenny Rongo, who is watching us um, online, on, virtually. This is a girl who we um, educated as Kambuni and Givai at Kenya High. And she finished. And after, after that, she went to the university, and Carol mentored her. Now, Jenny Rongo is now a mother of two, gainfully employed, and when I told her about the passing of her mother, she was distraught. She told me she's in Eldoret, she cannot make it here, but she will be in Karatina because her mother cannot be laid to rest. She has to see her mother rest. So there are many of those, and we just, again, thank them in advance that they understand that in these occasions when um, our emotions are just torn, uh, we very easily forget many people who ought to know uh, but have not been informed. So thank you very, very much, finally, for each and every one of us who spent time this morning, this afternoon to be here, to be in this cathedral, to feel it. Carol, imagine, this is the multitude that has come to send you off. But guess what? The multitude in heaven is celebrating. And so let us celebrate our faith. The only way we will be able to say, Carol, we are here too, because we shall be there too. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Thank you, Senior Council Lucy. Uh, thank you. I now see why, uh, Eric, I now see why, why advocates must write their judgments and submissions. <laughs> uh, uh, but anyway, thank you. Beautiful. Passion. I love that passion. Uh, that passion is on another level. Thank you, Lucy, for... For, 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 for that, beautiful. I will welcome Senior Counsel Fred Ngatia to now give us uh, directions, what happens from here all the way to Saturday. Senior Counsel Karibu. <laughs> Asante, Asante Provost. Uh, provost, Assistant Provost, my brothers and sisters, God is good. And all the time. Wow, wow, wow. Yangu ni machache is to do, have a rundown until the date that uh, will place the motor remains at the final resting place. After this beautiful service, there will be viewing of the body. And after the viewing of the body, Dr. Gedai and his family invites you for a cup of tea. Please have time to have that cup of tea. I also request you to have that cup of tea. And if you don't have the cup of tea, we'll say a silent prayer for you that you come back and have the cup of tea. <laughs> now, after that, we meet on Saturday. Our start time is at Leaf Funeral Home at 7 in the morning. If you could come slightly earlier, all the better, because by 7, our transport manager will be telling us to, be, to hit the highway. We have a long journey, not too long, it's about an hour 45. If you can't make it to Karatina, please come and bid farewell to our sister. Uh, and for those who travel with us, once you get to Karatina and you are going towards Nyeri, Karatina should be your last landmark. There is a little problem, not much of a problem because it's development, 
Si tunataka development, the road to Nyeri is being done into dual carriageway and the contractor has been a bit slow. So we turn off at the place, the road that goes to Gandu High School. Gandu High School should be the next la uh, landmark. Try to, to get, it's about five kilometers after Karatina Town. We'll try as much as possible to have a land, uh, to have signboards and everything. But if you think you are getting lost, all the villagers at my home know Gandu girls. Believe you me, ladies and gentlemen, Gandu girls is the equivalent to Cambridge University for the people of Nyeri. <laughs> no, please don't laugh that way because it means you are not taking me seriously. It is our Cambridge University. It is the Kenya High School and the Alliance High School. So if you think you are getting lost, ask for the road to Gandu girls, and that is the road that will take you directly home. It is at home that we will, of course, start the final service. We hope to start it at 10 in the morning and be done, hopefully, towards 1 p.m. That would conclude, so to speak, the remaining aspects of this journey. But please allow me, my brothers and sisters, to demystify one thing about lawyers. I will only take one minute of your time. Lawyers are supposed to be in all types of victories, a very glamorous life, a life full of nice things. That is not true. We are in the trenches fighting every day. I'll tell you one example. In 2017, the retired president nominated us to do his petition. We had already done fairly well at the Electro uh, Stadium, but there was a petition. I called upon my sister to be part of the drafting team. And as the team leader, I gave her some of the most difficult affidavits that were done. She did this despite the conditions she had, which she will never disclose to anybody. She did it so well, and we did the case so well. And the case by the electorate had already been done, and the case by the lawyers was so good. But Munajua Vila Idifanyika, Tulianguka, Natuka Anguka, my team members, apart from Carol and one other uh, lawyer, were so devastated. I think instead of taking tea and water, most decided to take other beverages. <laughs> and it is Carol who summoned us to come back because we had a re-election to contend with. And after we did the repeat election, you all know, again, there was a petition I called upon her, and once again, she did such wonderful work. This time, we won in the electorate and in court. Surprise of surprises. Many of my team members, now that we had a president in State House, went and gave them their names to be nominated to various state bodies and other jobs. But Caro did not want any other favor other than the work she did. She could have been nominated or appointed to any state corporation. She opted not to. She could have given her name for any of the state appointments. She opted not to. Many of my team members went to high office. Some, of course, the former solicitor general was in my team and many others. We have a special lady who went through the trenches, lived with the bruises, and lived with that comfort that she was there and did it to her best possible. Eternal rest grant the soul of our dear sister and let perpetual light shine upon her. May her soul rest in peace 
we say amen. May her soul rest in peace. Asante ni sana. Thank you, Senior Council. Great finish, great finish. We now bring this to a close so that we can have time for viewing and catching up and the refreshments as has been advised by Senior Council. And I hope the beverages are the right ones, eh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Let's now be upstanding for prayer. Grateful are we, O oh God, for granting us this time to celebrate Carol, to listen to her story for the years you gave her to us, and in particular for what she meant to the family. As we have prayed, we commend ourselves to your care that from the riches of Carol's legacy cause each one of us to pick at least something to emulate, to immortalize her. And now as we finish off, O oh Lord, we commend to you, Bernard, and pray that you grant him the enduring grace to withstand the grief that he has to endure of losing a dear friend. Be with him tonight into tomorrow and in particular on Saturday, as he lowers his best friend down the grave. To you, O Lord, we commend Wairimu, Hiko, and Mugure, that you strengthen them, O Lord, with your hand of righteousness. Comfort them and grant them, O Lord, that exceptional grace to release a mother so dear to them as Carol. But the beautiful memories they've shared here before us will live with them. But the legacy of faith and excellence that Carol has demonstrated, they will emulate. Wipe away their tears and grant them comfort that you alone can give. And in particular, after internment in Nyeri, hold them together around that they may journey through this process of healing. To you, O oh Lord, we commend Naishurua and Mayan and pray that even though they don't understand much about Shosho, that you will cause them to grow up supported by the ideals of Karu and seeking to father the name that she meant. And for the many other grandchildren that you may bring to the Gedais, we bless them and pray that your grace may endure. So strengthen us at the time of viewing, in particular the family, that our last respects to Carol may build memories in us for us to continue remembering her. We commend all of you now to God's hands. May shower you with your blessing, strengthen you and reward you for your friendships and for your generosity in supporting the Gidai family. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, this is how we'll recess. We'll use the door to my right, and then the viewing will happen at the lawn. We'll allow the family to go first, and uh, the, um, the team supporting the family, the ushers, we'd want you to please just be around to arrange. I know our current cell group is also around. I know Lote, uh, uh, Kinadoti are around. Let's support the arrangement and the queuing there so that we do that in a little orderly manner as we view quietly and, uh, and catch up. Family will follow the clergy as, uh, after the house. We sing, great is thy faithfulness.
like your words we are a family whose hearts are blazing so let's raise our candles and light up the sky pray into our father in the name of jesus make us a beacon in darkest There is a candle in every soul Some brightly burning and some dark and cold And there is a spirit who brings a fire Ignites a candle and makes his own Carry your candle Run to the darkness, seek out the helpless, confused and torn, and hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle, go light your word. Take your candle. Frustrated brother, see how he's tried to light his own candle some other way. See now your sister, she's been robbed and lied to, still holds a candle without a flame. So carry. Whose hearts are blazing So let's raise our candles And light up the sky Pray unto our Father In the name of Jesus Make us a beacon In darkest times
Take